Okay, everyone, I'm back. Um, I don't know what was happening there. Something weird with my internet, as I had feared. It's been a little bit dodgy the last couple of days, and as far as I can tell, it's just simply um, the atmospheric conditions at the moment. So I'm hoping that you can see me now. So if you've come back, if you found me again, do please leave me a comment. Tell me if you can hear this time. Tell me if you can see this time. I haven't said anything important, fortunately, and we'll hope that it's second time lucky. So please do just type in and tell me if you can hear me. In fact, I might even type in a comment as well, just to, in case you can't hear me, so you know what I'm saying. Okay, so let's, let's see if that works. So I've got the comments today, but we, <laughs> we've got a dodgy connection. So it's not good, is it? Brilliant, Kay. Thank you so much. I'm hugely relieved. So Kay can see and hear me okay. So I'm just going to carry on. Now, what was I doing? I was telling you that I am doing a crafting day tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. I would love to know what the rest of you are doing for the weekend. Um, stamping up news, there's not really anything new to tell you. Celebration is continuing. At the moment, everything is still available. And uh, over the next few or couple of weeks, um, as I have been doing up until now, what I've been doing is picking out some of my favourite celebration things and crafting with them just so that you can see what they're like, give you some ideas for what you can do with them because just occasionally you look at things and think, hmm, not sure what I would do with that. So excellent, thank you Marjorie, Sound and Vision is okay now, fabulous, hooray. So attempt two, fingers crossed. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stop and start again, don't you? Although I was cut off last time, it wasn't me. So today I'm going to show you the Wonderful World Bundle, um, which is one of my absolute favourites. Yes, you have to spend £90 to get it, but you do get a pack of paper, which in the catalogue would be 11 25 and you get a stamp set, which in the catalogue would probably be £20. So that's over £30 worth of products um, back and they are really are absolutely beautiful. I would love more of the paper. Unfortunately, I can't get more of the paper. Um, I will just have to spend £90 and get another bundle, I think. <laughs> Maybe that's the answer. All right, so I'm just going to cover you up and turn you down to my desk and then we will get going with some crafting. Mary's saying it's all okay now as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Mary. I'm sorry about before. I don't know what went wrong. I think probably the connection was just slowly getting lost and the sound faded out before the picture did. But I'm not a technical person, so I don't know. <laughs> but in my in my mind, that's probably what happened. Right, let me just get rid of some of these. Um, the, oh, and I've forgotten the mirror image again. I did that last week, didn't I? Right, let's just find that button, cover you over so ooh, you don't get dizzy as I do that. Okay, so that button is still here, thank goodness. Right, let's try again. Okay. Right, that doesn't look too bad. I'll just fiddle with things a little bit in a moment as soon as I've got this cable hooked up out of the way. I'm still not sure that's right. Okay, so what do we want? We want things to come. I'm probably turning it all the wrong way. As you know, I can't, can never remember if I turn it the same way or the, the opposite way. That looks, that looks worse. So which way did I turn it that way? I think I need to turn it this way. All right. I don't have a high-tech setup. <laughs> Had you realised that? <laughs> okay. Right, it's just nice to get it straight. Otherwise, um, it's bad enough if you've got wonky eyes. But if I'm presenting you with something that's not straight in the first place, Maureen's saying the sound is okay now as well. Fabulous. Thank you, Maureen. And she's saying hello to everyone. Right, just need to go that way a bit more, don't I? And then I think we will be straight. Right, hopefully that's it. So I've got my celebration brochure here. This is pages 14 and 15. 
um, oh, do you know maybe I just need to move the camera a little bit it's annoying me because that's not straight and it doesn't actually seem to matter what I do it's not going straight so let's see now that's worse isn't it that's worse so if I turn it the other way it must be better gosh are you at home shouting at me I think I might be right let's see if I'm that right okay it's probably gone too far the other way which it has it must be a happy medium let's see if it's there okay so the wonderful world bundle is a stamp set and some matching papers that's probably as good as I'm gonna get it today I think um, on this page you've got several beautiful samples with ideas of what you could make and on here you can see the papers uh, there's six different designs they're double sided so that's 12 patterns all together and you get two pieces of each sheet and the stamp set has five different stamps in it there's a cornflower which is my favorite uh, a rose and an iris and then there are a couple of leaves here as well those are great used with the flowers but they're also really nice used to make background patterns and when you spend 90 pounds this month and next month you can choose that as a free item if you would like um, I've got my papers here I will show you what I can but as you can see this is a very um, <laughs> very well loved pack so this is pattern one which is roses and lilies this is so pretty all pinks and purples with a purple geometric pattern on the back this one ha is sort of blues and um, burgundies with some white we've got edelweiss we've got lilies I'm not sure what that one is roses cornflowers and on the back there's a leaf pattern this one has a really pretty small flower repeat pattern on one side and then oh, it doesn't really matter which way up I hold it actually and then a pattern on this side of some of those flower images which alternate and some of them are up the right way and some of them are upside down I'll tell you all the colors in the pack in a minute now this one is a bit of a sad sheet because I haven't got much of it left um, <laughs> <laughs> but this has got really large images if I put my hand there you can see the size of these images I love fussy cutting so I have been cutting these out but equally you could just die cut them or, or snip them out you know with just a rectangle around them or whatever so you've got all those flower images on the other papers but in a much much larger scale here and I like these for focal points oh on the back of that sorry is a blue flower pattern then there's this one with yellow yellow stripes on one side and then on the other side we have irises and roses uh, we've got the lily and then we've got I'm not sure what this is uh, this little pink flower anyway and then have I got any of the last one left yes I have so this one has small variations of those images and pink with a diamond all over print on the back so I think that's six patterns isn't it one two three four five six yes so that is all the patterns in the paper it's really lovely um, and actually a pack goes a very long way I've used this in um, some classes I've used it for my team I've made a lot myself and I do still have bits of paper left as well so it goes further than you might at first think the colors in there are daffodil delight flirty flamingo melon mambo mossy meadow orchid oasis pear pizzazz rich razzleberry sahara sand and starry sky so you've got blues purples pinks and greens and then just a bit of yellow as well this is annoying me I can't get this paper in because I've got a little bit stuck up there I'm gonna to have to deal with that later I think aren't I okay, let's pop that down there I'll show you the stamp set to give you an idea of the scale I've actually got the cornflower stamp out to use in a minute so you'll see that one then we've got the iris and the rose and then the leaves and these are red rubber stamps so they're really nice very good quality oh and I've just found something there that uh, I was going to show you at the beginning I'll show you at the end instead <laughs> <laughs> I 
okie dokie right so let me bring some bits and pieces out here I do have a sheet with the measurements on in case you wanted that. Now I wanted to make something with the paper that's got the small images on it. And I've seen all kinds of versions of this on the internet. Um, so there's lots of other samples out there if you want to go and have a look. So I decided that three wasn't quite enough for a card front. I wanted a little bit more than that. So I've gone with four images. But to go with four images and to get the spacing right, I actually had to go with a card that was slightly wider than usual. But it will just about fit in an envelope, as long as I don't go too wild with the thickness of it. I don't put too many layers of dimensionals. It's going to fit a standard envelope, even though it's not a standard sized card. So let me put my measurements here for you to see. I hope I've written big enough. My card base is six and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. So it's a bit bigger than usual. And I've scored it down the middle and folded it in half. So this dimension is um, bigger than usual, particularly. I then got a layer of patterned paper and I chose this one with the pink flowers and the mossy meadow background and that's just a quarter of an inch smaller around at six inches by three and seven eighths of an inch that doesn't look right six inches by three and seven eighths it surely should be oh no it is yes yeah yeah yes because that's four and an eighth of an inch sorry <laughs> you're the wrong measurement there so that's that and Strictly speaking, this pink is Melon Mambo, um, which is a very vivid pink, and I do love a vivid pink, but I've actually gone with polished pink, which is slightly softer, which I think still coordinates beautifully, but isn't quite so in your face. I've got a piece of white for my insert, which is six inches by three and seven eighths. And I have a piece of polished pink card here, which my little flowers are going to be mounted onto. And that measures five and three quarter inches by just under two and an eighth. I did it at two and an eighth, and that was just too deep. So it's just under two and an eighth, two and an eighth inches. All right, I've got some bits and pieces here for sentiments and adding on to my insert. And then I've got these four images here, which I punched out using the. Um, what's it called? Rectangular postage stamp punch. Um, I was going to punch three and then do one in front of you and then I got carried away so I've punched them all. But basically if you pick up the card, sorry the paper, the patterned paper and slide it into the punch holding your punch this way up you can see where your flower image is and punch in exactly the right place. So that's what I did with that one. Okay let me see if anyone's... No. No more comments, I was just checking for that. So I've got four of those little images from that punch and the first thing I'm going to do is to glue them onto here. Now I have a note to myself, this is a brand new glue container and it's really hot so if I'm not careful that glue is going to come out really speedily so I need to watch for that. I just need to decide how I want to arrange these. Maybe like that I think, those two are a little bit darker so I'll put them to the centre. So let's glue on the back of these carefully, she says. Not able to get any glue to come out at all. There we are. And I'm going to do the two end ones first and then the two in the middle just to help me get my borders uh, even. So that should be about right. Yeah, that's going to work fine. Ooh. 
that one wasn't stuck down and then I caught it with my finger let's try again there we are oh forgive me at having to keep drinking it is it is hot <laughs> so I'll set that aside for now I'm going to layer up my patterned paper and my card base now I've got a top fold card here tent fold um, which is not something I often do because they can kind of sag when you stand them up however because of the dimensions of this card if I cut it with the fold on the side then my card was not my sheet of card was not large enough to do that unless I used um, 12 by 12 which I didn't have so uh, hence I put the fold at the top all right now I'm going to put this on towards the top because I do want lots of that paper to show because it is very pretty so I'm just keeping my borders at the side and the top even for this and then I have some white card here and I also cut some pink I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with this and quite often I make the cards first and then I remake them for you but I haven't done that this time so I'm just playing really yeah I think that's what I'm going to do I think I could put it in the middle or off to one side what do you think maybe I'll put it in the middle actually I quite often do something to the side but maybe I'll do that in the middle anyway let me stamp it first and then I'll see uh, so I have mossy meadow ink here and I've got a happy birthday stamp which is from artistically inked it's a nice bold happy birthday I felt this card needed something that was a reasonable size nothing too small so let's see if I can stamp on this small piece of card you're actually better off stamping on a bigger piece and cutting it down but um, that takes a little bit longer so I thought I would shortcut and take a deep breath there we are so now I just need to decide um, how long I want this let's trim this off a little bit okay and then I can add this to my polished pink card like that Still having to be careful with this glue I'm getting slightly more out than I would like really but never mind and then I'll trim that one off as well now where am I going to put this am I going to pop it in the middle I think I probably am actually I had thought I was going to pop it down the corner but I think I quite like it in the middle like that there we go and if my envelope was a little bit more generously sized I would probably be popping this up on dimensionals and I would probably have popped this layer up on dimensionals too but I do want it to fit into a standard C6 envelope and if I make it too thick it won't there we are and then I've got my insert let me just show you that a bit closer actually first it's a really long lag before my iPad catches up and I, I'm never quite sure where to hold this so you can see it I got a new um, stand for my phone which is what I filmed this on ages ago now I mean it's months and months it could even be a year um, and I still don't seem to have got the hang of it I don't know I'm not a super technological person I do my best but uh, <laughs> you, you get me warts and all there we go okay so let's stamp that inside again and then I have some of the patterned paper which I just thought I would pop along the bottom there this strip is half an inch wide I 
using my grid paper to get it straight and then I'm just going to trim off that extra there and then that can go inside and my card will be finished And there we are. This is the first card using the Wonderful World paper. I haven't used the stamps on this one, but the paper really is very pretty. And I've used the rectangular postage stamp or postage punch on these, but you could cut them out using a circle, um, a circle die, a rectangle die. You could even just snip them out using your trimmer. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm glad you like it. All right, so I'll clear the decks a little bit and then I'll bring in some more bits and pieces for the next card. I'm going to clean that stamp because we all know that I will lay my arm across it otherwise and then I'll be laying green ink onto everything I come into contact with so let's just give that a quick a quick clean I'm glad you like it Mary yeah I think these colors really are so pretty I'm a bit of a sucker for pink and green um, but these really are beautiful uh, if you've got a long wish list Maybe you can justify crossing some things off it now because uh, you'll be getting something really nice for free if you do. Okay. Right, so for this one I'm working in Starry Sky. I've got a Starry Sky card base. This is just a standard card base. It's eight inches by five and three quarter inches scored at four so nothing fancy about that I don't know if you've heard the dog bark I'm hoping it's not going to be a delivery or something I'm not expecting anything so hopefully I won't have to go and answer the door or something ridiculous um, I've got a standard white insert but for the front I've actually got shimmery white and I don't suppose the light will pick up but this is an off-white card. It's not as creamy colored as very vanilla, but it does have a little shimmer to it. It's very, very pretty. Um, and then I've die cut some more shimmery white card using one of the stitched rectangles dies. So those are the two pieces I'm gonna use for my front. Mary saying the rectangle, rectangular stamp punch, uh, what's it called, rectangular postage punch, is on her wish list. I don't blame you, Mary. It's a really nice punch. Very, very useful to have. All right, so I'm now going to get my Starry Sky ink out, and I've got my Cornflower stamp, which is quite big. If I put my hand there, you can see it's quite a good-sized stamp. And first of all, I'm going to make a background pattern on here. So I am going to ink the stamp and stamp repeatedly. Uh, but focusing on round the edge because this piece is going to lay across it so I don't need to worry really about what's in the middle because it'll be covered up. Because it's quite a big stamp I'm actually taking my ink pad to the stamp rather than the other way around and I'm just going to stamp around the edges and I'm inking it each time because I want the ink to be uh, the same intensity everywhere. And this blue is really beautiful. Not sure if I got the edges of it there. I'm trying to turn the punch each time I use it, but to not get too much stem on there. I've got a gap there which I'm going to come back to. 
but equally I don't want it to be completely symmetrical and look like I've just been making a border design. I've stamped this cornflower in lots of different colours and it's interesting some of them show up the detailing on the stamp really clearly and with others it's much less clear. This starry sky one is really showing the detail beautifully. I'll pick this up in a moment and show you. Right, I'm just going to add a little bit down here. There we are, that's better. So I'll try and show you that stamp a little bit closer up. There. There's a lot of light and shade on that. It's really gorgeous. And then I'm going to stamp it one more time on my die cut rectangle. There we are. So that's the full image. All right, so let's put a few of these layers together. Shut that up for the moment as well. Actually, before I do that, what I haven't done is I haven't just double checked that I've got enough detail on there. Yeah, I think that's fine. I didn't want to find that I actually had a gap where I needed, needed a bit more stamping, but I think that will do nicely. This would be absolutely fine stamped on white card. I just fancied a little bit of shimmer for a change. Uh, but I could have used white, I could have used vanilla. And I think that this stamp actually works really well in all kinds of colours. I know traditionally cornflowers are blue, although you can also get them in white and pale pink. Um, but I will show you another sample when I finish this one where I've used different colours and I think it works just as well. Okay, so I wanted a bow for this. So I've actually used some of this and I knew I wouldn't remember what it was called. Woven ribbon. So it's half an inch wide and I put it over my hand. Hopefully you can see it's a really loose weave ribbon. It's very soft in a sort of an ivory colour. Um, and because I had used shimmery white, I felt that this ribbon went nicely with that. So I've tied one of my double bows. I'm going to stick it on and then I will show you again how I do that. It's something I've shown a few times. And I know one or two of you have actually sent me photos of things you've made, which is something I really love. And you have been mastering the double looped bow, which is very impressive. So I will show it again for those of you that maybe haven't seen it before or would like to have a go. There we go. So I've got a piece of Starry Sky ribbon here which I thought would actually show up against my hands much better. So I'm holding the ribbon in my dominant hand, I'm right handed, and I'm holding it across two of the fingers on my non-dominant hand, my left hand, and I'm just going to hold that in place with my thumb and I've got a bit of a tail here and then I've got most of the ribbon going over the top of my index finger and the width between the top of my index finger and the bottom of my middle finger is going to be the width of the bow from the edge of one loop across the middle to the edge of the other loop. So you can make these large or small just depending on how wide apart or how close together you bring your fingers. And then I'm essentially just going to make two loops on each of my fingers, but working the ribbon in a figure of eight. So let me show you. I'm going to go over and round and under. So that's a sort of a figure of eight, like that. And now I have a loop of ribbon on the top, and I have a loop of ribbon underneath as well as the end. 
and then I'm going to do that one more time so over the top finger and around the bottom finger so now I've got two loops of ribbon on each finger then I bring this back to the middle and go across with it and then I'm going to push this excess ribbon through that gap there like that so now it's coming out the bottom and I'm going to bring it back round towards the middle trying to keep all those loops on my fingers and then the end of my ribbon is going to go underneath so I went over the middle and to the back and then that made this loop here and then the end of my ribbon is going to go back to the front and then underneath that part so I've effectively tied a knot around those loops I'm going to pull that tight and then I can just slip it off my fingers and there I have a double looped bow um, and you can fiddle with it a little bit you can pull that knot across the middle I hadn't got it quite in the middle but that's okay I can sort that out um, and you can kind of pull the loops apart a little bit there we go and then I just need to trim the ends and I'm there so I do really, really like this double looped bow and you can make a triple looped bow or a quadruple looped bow. Just keep looping it around your fingers. Make sure that you've got the same number of loops on the top finger and the bottom finger. Right, where was I? <laughs> so that's my bow on there. Now I wasn't sure whether to put some of these on. These are the solid faceted gems. So let me know what you think. These are strictly Knight of Navy, these here, but actually they're a very close match to Starry Sky. I wasn't sure whether to pop some of these on or not, so let me know what you think. While you're thinking about that, I'm going to stamp the insert, and I'm just going to stamp that cornflower inside. I'm going to leave it as a blank card, and then it will work as a thank you, a get well, um, a thinking of you, anything like that. just stamped that off the edge do let me know what you think about those little blue gemstones I can't decide sometimes less is more sometimes more is more it's not very straight is it that's better okay so that's my card so far nobody's saying yes add the gemstones so maybe I will just leave it plain like that what I will do is I will show you another version with different colors but it's exactly the same card with just one no two changes to it so there we go so with this one I've added an extra layer of card behind my background stamped card I really like parakeet party um, but it is quite an in-your-face color so you have to be a little bit careful with it so I've just added it it's just a fraction larger than my stamped card just to give a little bit of color around the edge and then my shimmery white rectangle I used my ink blending brush to blend some of that parakeet party ink across it before I stamped it and I've done my stamping in black so it's black and parakeet party this one my ribbon here is the uh, seam binding ribbon which I've colored with my stamping blend to give me some black ribbon and I did add some little black dots on this okay Mary's saying no gems good call Mary I'm gonna go with that Let me move that one out of the way sorry there we are hopefully you can see that now and I've made this bow in exactly the same way but this one does actually have three loops each side so this is a triple loop bow all right so that's card number two
And then finally, I thought I'd do a bit more of a complicated card for you. We're going to do a twisted easel card. I've got the measurements for this one here. There's a few more pieces and parts for this. So this is my card base. This is Daffodil Delight and it measures 11 and a half by five and three quarters and I scored it in the middle at five and three quarters and then I'm actually going to add an additional score line to it. So I've got my ruler and a bone folder. I could do this in my trimmer but I find it easier with a ruler because it's on the diagonal and I'm going to score from the top of my centre fold down to the bottom left hand corner. There we are. So that's added. Oh, look at that. I've got a smudge of ink on me somewhere I've got on there. Never mind. I think, I think I will be covering that up. Fingers crossed, eh? So I've got a diagonal score line there now, and I'm going to fold those, but first I'm going to just rub my fingers with a baby wipe. I think I've got starry sky ink on my hands somewhere. So let's just try and get that off. Oh, there it is. Look, can you see? That's where it was. Tell me you've done that too. I'm sure we've all done that. Right. Okay. And I'm going to make both of these valley folds. So it's like a V. And then this one goes the same way. Okay, and I'm going to score the uh, fold these really, really well, and burnish those folds really well. All right. So the next thing I need is what's going to become my front panel, and this is always the same size as my card base, which in this case is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So this is the bottom front layer. And this is going to be attached to this section here so that it will flip up like this. And this is not easy to show with a camera that's overhead, but let's see if you can see that if I put that like that. So that's how that will go. So it will stand up like that. That's the above view. And then I have a couple of layers to go on there. I've got a piece of contrast card which is five and a half by five and a half inches. So I've chosen pear pizzazz. So that's just a quarter of an inch smaller all round. This doesn't look very straight, this piece of daffodil card. In fact, it's, I don't know if it is straight or not. Let's have a look at that. Can I get this straight? No, that's dreadful. Can you see that? I'm just going to grab another piece of yellow card, which just involves me reaching across and getting my paper boxes. Let me just try and do that in the least cumbersome way. I'm going to just cut that yellow layer again because that doesn't look remotely square to me. Fortunately, my box with all my yellow card in it is just within arm's reach of my desk. There we go. Right. There's some daffodil on top. Right, let's cut that again, I think. Put this piece in here. We'll cut it down for something else. It's not square. Goodness knows what I was doing with that. Right, so what do I need? Contrast colour. No, I need the same colour as the base. Five and three quarters square. Let's try again. That looks better. Okay. Right, as long as the green one is straight, that should look better. Yes, that's much better. There we are. <laughs> All right. So my yellow one is five and three quarters inches square. My green one, pear pizzazz, is five and a half inches square. And then I have a piece of the patterned paper. It's got this one on the back. So this is the paper that we used for the first card. 
but I'm using the other side of it so I've got those Daffodil Delight stripes on there so that measures five and a quarter inches square Mary's just asked what do I keep my card in I'll see if I can get it under the camera these are just clear storage boxes for A4 paper or card Mary um, I find them on eBay usually and they are about mm, two inches or a little bit more deep like that and it's sort of frosted slightly frosted card um, and I just I keep all my yellows in one box all my blues in one box actually I've got a couple of boxes for blues and, and so on um, some people keep them in colour families but I prefer to keep all my yellows together and so on so that, that's what they are the only thing you have to watch is depending on where you keep the boxes they're obviously that you can they're see-through that means the ultraviolet light can get through as well so to help stop the card fading I have like a, a buffer piece of card so I've got a two inch um, deep strip of card there which I just tuck down the side this is the edge that faces the window and then that card will fade rather than the edges of my A4 card it's not a problem in the winter but in the summer my craft room gets a lot of daylight a lot of sunshine a lot of UV light so I just have to watch for that a little bit all right so those are my layers there and then for my focal point I have cut out one of those large images I've cut out the lily image um, I mostly used scissors but I did take my craft knife in for some of these little kind of inside areas here now I'm going to show you another layer in a minute and if that layer is white you can get away with leaving those pieces and it's not going to notice but I couldn't decide whether I was going to use white or yellow so you can see that if I'm laying this on white card and that's white it's probably not going to notice that I haven't cut those out but then I thought I don't know maybe I want yellow for a bit more of a contrast with the flower so here we go let me know do we want that square to be yellow so there's more of a contrast with the flower or white so it contrasts more with the background let me know what you think So I'm going to start to layer these pieces together and they just lay one on top of the other so that's quite straightforward Mary saying yellow anybody else got any thoughts Pam saying yellow, Maureen saying yellow, fabulous. Now I was going towards yellow and I think there's no doubt in my mind at all now I've got you, all you excellent paper crafters saying yellow so yellow is what we'll go with. Thank you for helping me decide. There we are, pop this one on here and actually I've forgotten to add a piece, I'll add it afterwards. I should have added it first because it would have been easier but never mind. I actually cut this little scalloped piece using now I bought the dies over because I knew I would never remember what they were called uh, the scalloped contours dies so you've got these beautiful scalloped rectangle layers and then this one cuts a lovely edging piece and then there's a couple of dies which cut out the coordinating stamps as well right and I want this piece to go along the bottom Oops, I want it that way up actually so I'm going to need to trim it a little bit it would have been much easier if I'd stuck it on the paper and then trimmed it off but I got a bit overexcited with my glue there and I glued <laughs> everything together so make a little pencil mark and cut conservatively I can always cut a little bit more off but I cannot stick it back on once it's cut off yeah just a smidgen more you 
see I'd have got this right first time if I glued this to the paper and then just turned it over and trimmed off the extra card it would have been easy <laughs> never mind okay I'm going to glue that on the bottom and this has got a little stitched board around the scallops I think it's really really pretty okay so here is my yellow rectangle popular choice let's glue that in the middle I'm actually going to use my grid paper I think to help me center this Uh, let's just have a look I've got a center there's a center cross on the grid paper which I find really helpful so as long two and seven eighths one two and seven eighths so I just need to make sure that I've got the same distance from the middle to the left as I have to the middle to the right so I know this is in the middle and then if I do the same with this square I can envisage that going straight down the middle of the square and that should should be straight and even now I'm just going to pop this on top and then I'm going to glue that across there so I'm building the whole of this front panel before I attach it to my card base because with a twisted easel because the front is twisting to the side um, the correct way up for this panel on the card base is not always what you would think it was so if I build the card front so I can clearly see what's the top and what's the bottom that makes it much easier for me to uh, get it on my card and get it in the right place okay I'm just checking if there are any more comments there aren't I'm just gonna have some water seems to be another one of those days where it doesn't matter how much water I drink it's not quite enough alrighty so I'm going to bring back my card base so this is the, the front of my card it's going to flip up like that and that means that I want this to sit like this I'm hoping you can see that and it makes sense so that means when it's laid flat I actually need to glue this front on sideways <laughs> if that's not a contradiction in terms which is why I make the front up first you see if I put the front on the way it sort of feels like it wants to go when my card flips up my front is on its side and it's very easy to see that if I've already made up the front the way I want want it to be I've got the detail on there I can see immediately that that flower is going to be upside down if I put it like that it will be the right way up so I'm now just going to slide this to the side and not turn it round and put glue on what is the bottom triangle so I've got this diagonal line here and I've got a top triangle and a bottom triangle and this bottom triangle is where that front panel is going to fit so I'm going to put glue on there and I'm going to use a reasonable amount of glue because this card is going to move opened and shut opened and shut and I don't want anything to come adrift and now I'm just going to lay this over it's exactly the same size as that folded card base so as long as I match it up then it will be in exactly the right place and attached to that triangle where I put the glue there we are now obviously if I had put glue on that piece as well it would 
just open like that it wouldn't twist but now it will twist and the only other thing I need is something here to stop it falling down like that so I need to just make a little stopper which is going to go on to my insert so for my stopper pieces I've cut a stitched circle that's from the stylish shapes dies you've seen me use these such a lot they are fantastic so it's one of those stitched circles and then I've used a scalloped circle from the layering circles dies and somewhere in my box of tricks I have an ink pad and a stamp so I'm using peaceful moments for this um, the happy birthday stamp here which fits really nicely on this white circle and I have Pear Pizzazz ink which is the same colour as my green pieces there we are so that is stamped on there and we'll layer those two together and then I'm just going to decorate the insert layer before I stick this little stopper piece on And for that, I have this image from um, I've got the box here, Quiet Meadow. So it's this one here. So this is some distressed type. And the words actually have got garden in there, wildflowers, um, things like that. So I thought the words were appropriate. Because it's distressed, it's not really going to be red particularly. It's just going to be kind of there and add some interest to my insert now my insert's going to go in here and with any luck cover up that inky smudge like that and my card is going to sit like this and the stopper is going to go here so really my card is going to be seen from this point this is going to be the front I don't know if I can show that to you or not um, but this this way is going to be the way it's viewed so I'm going to work on this uh, insert piece actually on the diagonal which feels a little bit unusual so again I'm going to use this center line on my grid paper and I'm going to keep the two points exactly on that line and that way I know that I've got everything I was going to say straight I don't know straight is the right word but uh, even anyway so I'm using Pear Pizzazz ink. I'm going to stamp off twice because I want this quite faint. And then I'm going to use the edge of my block lined up against these horizontal grid lines just to make sure that what I stamp is straight. And I'm just going to repeat stamp this lots of times. and it's I'm kind of offsetting where the join is so I move that card so I can now move it back stamp off twice actually I want to I want to offset the join in the image so it doesn't go straight up the middle So I find grid paper is fantastic for this kind of thing because you can really keep things straight very easily. If you don't have any in your arsenal, you might want to add some to your next order. Okay, I've just stamped that one upside down, which is going to bother me. So <laughs> I'm going to turn this over and start again. okay check that's up the right way bit of a rookie error there but never mind you can see that I'm not perfect
I'll make this the last line across. There we are. So I've just got a little bit of interest on that insert. I haven't stamped right to the top because I do want somewhere to be able to write. But otherwise I felt there was a lot of white space here. And I wanted just a bit more interest for my card. Alright, so I'm just going to check directions again. So my card is going to sit up this way. And my insert needs to go in this way. So again... I'm just remembering that this bottom right hand corner is where the bottom right hand corner of that stamping goes. And even if I did have to use the emergency side of my card, nobody is going to know. Because you won't tell, will you? I know you won't. <laughs> okay. And as a bonus, that's covered up my inky smudge as well. Hooray for that. Okay, so we're nearly there. Yeah, I just think that's a little bit more interesting there. So now I need to add my stopper, which is what's going to, going to stop the front piece from falling down. So I'm going to use stamping dimensionals on the back of this, and I'm going to pull them in from the edge just a little bit because I need some space between the edge of my circle and the first dimensional to allow the edge of the card to just tuck underneath. If I put the dimensionals right to the edge, there isn't very much space for that card front to tuck in. And if I stuck this down flat, there wouldn't be anywhere for that card front to tuck in either. So dimensionals are the answer so now I just need to decide how far in I'm going to put it so it's going to go in a diagonal line in from there and I'm going to have to turn this to face me and then show you I think um, and I think about there there we are so all it needs now is a bow it's a bit of a theme isn't there today have I put bows on all my cards no I haven't actually only only this last one that's all right then you're not all bowed out yet. So I've got some more of this seam binding ribbon here and I'm going to colour it. I wanted yellow ribbon but I didn't have any. So I'm going to bring in my stamping blend. This is Light Daffodil Delight. And I'm just going to colour this. Now this pen is a bit of a casualty. Um, I like to give my customers the chance to use blends in classes but they don't always... Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a polite way of putting it. Sometimes the pens have a bit of a, a tough time in classes <laughs> with a lot of different people using them. So this one, the end of it is a little bit frayed and sad. I have got a replacement, but I'm just trying to use up all the ink in this one. So I'm just using the brush end to colour in this ribbon. Uh, because this is a permanent ink, it will colour the ribbon and it won't wash out or rub off. And because you can colour it, I like all our white ribbons very much because then I can exactly have the ribbon I want. doesn't matter what colour ribbon I need. It doesn't matter if it's not in the catalogue, I can make it. So I just measured off roughly the amount I wanted for my bow and then I'm colouring it nearly there. This ribbon is so um, light weight that the ink just goes through to the other side so I don't need to turn it over and colour the other side. Sometimes if you've got a really um, thick ribbon you do need to colour the other side. Just make sure there's no little bits I've missed. I think that is okay. All right, so I am going to tie another one of those double loop bows. Or maybe I'll make a triple. Let's make a triple, why not? I think I've got enough ribbon for that. So I'm making figure of eights around my fingers. And I've done that three times. So there's three loops on each finger. I'm going to go over the middle and pull all the extra ribbon through to the back. Bring it back to the front and go underneath that one going across the middle and then pull it really tight there. That's so quick to make a fancy bow. There we 
There we are. I need to just trim my ribbon ends. a bit long. I think it's the same length as the other but for some optical illusion reason it looks too long. There we are. Pop that in there so I need a glue dot or two for that. My glue dots do not want to come off the backing paper today. Normally I would just dab the bow on there. I did that on the last bow and it, they glue dots just didn't want to come off. I think they're just so hot. But they're really sticky so I'm just going to hook them off with my scissors. Let's give it three. Oh, can you see? They, they just want to stay where they are. Thank you very much. And then I'll just press my bow on there. There we are. And that is my easel card finished. I'm really pleased with that. It'll fit nicely into a six inch envelope. I'm trying to give you the best the best view of it. I don't know how that will work. I've turned it around a little bit. Let's see. I'll wait for my iPad to catch up. See if you can see it that way any better. Not really. <laughs> it's very difficult. However, I did make another one in a different colorway just to show you. So this is the pink one. So every thing is actually I've got a glue smudge there I've seen I have to rub that off afterwards everything is the same as this one except obviously it's a different flower but it's from the same sheet of paper I've got a circle in the center instead of a square different ribbon um, I've fiddled around with the borders a little bit this one has got more green showing um, it's pear pizzazz card again this time I've used powder pink I've done the inside in exactly the same way as the yellow one. There we go. Hoping you can see those. They are extremely difficult to show you standing up. And when I send one of these, I quite often write on the inside of the edge that's just going to tuck underneath, tuck this edge under the happy birthday and then people understand about standing them up because I've lost count of the number of people I've sent an easel card to and have found out later that um, you know it's been propped up in all kinds of strange ways on their mantelpiece you know and I loved the card but it kept falling over and that sort of thing so <laughs> if people aren't paper crafters they probably don't know that that's the way it's supposed to stand so I do I do tell them that now all right, so let me remind you what we've made today. We started out with this one with the postage stamp punched flowers. Then we made um, a monochrome card. And then we did a twisted easel card. So quite a few different things today. Sorry, that leads in the way. I'm just holding it up now so you can hopefully see those cards a little bit better. It has been so much fun today. I hope I have um, tempted you just a little bit with this wonderful world bundle. I know you have to spend £90, but there is so much you can do with these, and these items aren't going to cost you anything. Before I go, I just want to... I'm sorry about this cable. It's, it's really awkward trying to get it somewhere where it's not going to be in your way. Let's try that. There we are. I've just made up um, a kit that was new to me. This is the Million Thanks card kit. And I thought it looked pretty, but when I opened it up and made the cards, I thought these cards are actually much prettier than I was even anticipating. So, let me show you. So, this is the card kit. It comes with a mini ink pad in Evening Evergreen and a nice stamp set, which I will show you in a moment. 
Um, the item number is 159444 and it's £20. So it makes nine cards and then when it's finished you've still got the ink pad and the stamps. Here are the stamps. So we've got a million thanks, seriously grateful for you, thank you, thanks. Um, sorry, it's all I can say is thanks. This one in particular would be really easy to mask, so you could just put some tape over the back there and then stamp the thanks. And then you've got two little tiny flowers. There's a lovely mixture of fonts in here. So that's a brilliant stamp set. That is probably a, I don't know, £14 stamp set on its own. Um, which is pretty good if you think that uh, you've only paid £20 for your kit. So then there are three of each card. Now I've made them up pretty much like the actual kit suggests because I just thought they were pretty like that. But everything is in there including these little black gems. This one's got some fruit and flowers on it. I'm going to pick these up in a minute because all the card fronts are embossed as well. This is my favourite. I think this one is so pretty. And if I tilt that, I'm hoping you can see this one has got little shiny spots on it as if it's been embossed with clear embossing powder. And then these flowers on here, again, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, are 3D'd. So all the pieces, everything you can see on there is in the kit. And I've stamped this, but the stamps are beautiful. That looks printed. It's absolutely perfect. This one has got leaves coming down from the top which are also embossed. And I love this thank you. I'm going to use these stamps an awful lot. As you know by now, I make a lot of thank you cards. And then this one's got squares embossed on it. So really lovely, lovely, lovely card kit. If you haven't spotted that, then do have a look. You won't find it in the catalogues, but you will find it either online in my online shop or you can simply order it from me on your next order all you need is the number which is 159444 so there we go I'm going to turn the camera up and say a proper bye bye we've overrun a little bit but that's because we had a bit of a false start didn't we if you're going to watch this on YouTube you won't be seeing the false start video because nothing really happened so I'm not going to upload that bit I shall just upload this main part but anyway, we've come to the end. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, whatever you're doing and whatever the weather is doing in your part of the world. I will be back here next week, um, Friday at two o'clock. I'm just trying to look at my calendar and tell you what the date will be. That will be the 29th of July. That'll be the last Friday in July. Goodness me, how the time flies. And I'm going to be doing some crafting with I can't remember the name of them another celebration item because I just think it's fun for you to see things made with them the tree lot dies so they are on page 12 of your celebration brochure and I should be crafting with those until then thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you soon bye bye